let's see, where's my access point? Ah, there it is. All right, let's get straight into it. Da -da -da -da. This time, a few months have passed since the ending of the Inquisition, or particularly the events of the Inquisition. The Inquisition itself is now in full throes with Zachariah appointing a chapter master in the faction, now being filled to the brim with all manner of new Inquisitors that will seek out evil and dispatch those that would follow the path of the Dark Gods. My mic is quiet. It should not be quiet. Like, what? I don't... Sounds good to me. Okay. I think I'm getting trolled. Anyway. Use your big boy voice. <laughs> My big boy voice. Alright, so let's move, let's move straight through it. So, a few months have passed since then. A couple of things that you need to be updated on so that you have an idea of the context of what is happening. Since the events of the Inquisition and the defeat of Marcellus Kingville by the heroes of Verum, time has passed. From those few months passing and the defeat of Marcellus Kingville, there was prosperity throughout the world. The factions went about their normal days and the call for heroes had suppressed somewhat. And so... The months turned to years, until finally, on the fourth year, there was a call stated once more, a call for heroes, a call for action, a call to perhaps destiny. However, the four years of prosperity has come with a price. The Ayatonis Imperium has risen up once more and the followers of the old elven ways have begun to grow clout and following. Azalon, the elven lord from Glaeus, has sought to intervene with the Aetanus Imperium's rise, as well as the Sharkai. The Ash Elves from Elda Sharkai have come to assist the Mages Guild and to make their own foothold within the land of Kalkatesh. And thus, our story picks up during this time of uncertainty, as a great evil has been stopped, and the alliances forged before begin to dwindle. A group of scholars, a makeshift alliance, have called out to those that wish to prove themselves in the deserts of Majital. For there are dark things hidden beneath the sands, and the wind carries with it a wicked whisper. And thus, this is where our story begins. Let's see who arrives first. Very well. The first to arrive is a heavily cloaked man with a bow across his back. He approaches the caravan and he carries with him a purpose, a thirst for knowledge unseen. A drive to, to need to know. A drive for a wish to know. And perhaps another purpose not yet seen. DeVale, please introduce your character. Introduce yourself and it's why you have come. It's the noon, God! Hello. Fuck! I am DeVale Silver. Um, I, at a young age, my parents were killed by an organization, and I was 
in a time I was raised in the Badlands, which was not a place you would want to be raised in, not a good place to be born. So a lot of my life, I was just barely surviving. And then there's a hint of light in my life where an old man, his name was Jerry. He came and he picked me up. He was one of the kind people in the Badlands that you don't get to see every often. And he raised me and taught me how to be a warlock. And one of his purposes was to raise his dead wife, who, he, he did, since the Badlands is not a rich place, the only means he could see is through means of necromancy. And that's where I've learned a lot of my spells from. A lot of my spells are based on necromancy or ne necrotic stuff. So I was raised a lot and learned the warlock through him. And then later on, he too was killed by an organization. But one of the most important things he taught me was that knowledge is power. And that is why I go through my life trying to become as knowledgeable and as powerful as I can. All right. You approach the caravan. Your thirst for knowledge leading you down a path to the call of the scholars, to the call to those that would seek the secrets beneath the sands. And ahead, a stern man, a Majatolian native, frowns at you as you approach. What do you do? Hmm. I'll ask him what this place is. Hello, sir. The man sneers and keeps his hand on the back of his weapon before he speaks. You'd be well to watch yourself, stranger. Why are you here? Well, the same reason anyone would want to come here. To know things they did not know before. Tuh. You seek the scholars, then? Yes. Then you will wait here, for there are others expected. You shall be escorted at the same time, where I can keep an eye on you. I will wait, then. And thus, DeVale waits to the side for whatever new individual might walk through the sand and wind. The sands reveal a curious character, stout and wide, that breaks through the horizon's light as the sand whirls around him. Ronnie, please introduce the character and yourself. All right. Uh, before I actually got to that point, I would have been darting from, like, from the tree to behind the rock, always doing my best to hide, and then waiting for tufts of sand to kick up and travel within the clouds of sand, and then end up <laughs> when I see that there is finally no danger. I, uh, I I walk out into the open. And uh, so my character is uh, Kuno, and he comes from a reclusive village on Bloodwave Bay, on, on the beaches. And uh, he, he stood guard in the shadows over his village. And um, his, his years are coming near to an end. And uh, he, he's searching for... He, 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 he loved nothing more than... than his time spent watching over his people and watching the 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 younglings hatch so he 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 doesn't want that to to end so soon for him and and he seeks a way to to extend that and uh i think that's enough for now kuno ahead you can see the great caravan of the khanate open before you there you see a strange heavily cloaked man stand to the side, and there a very gruff-looking native that eyes you as you approach. What do you do? 
uh, I approach him carefully, not out of fear, but out of not wanting to come off as threatening. Uh, and uh, I, I, I stand very still. I say, uh, I am Kuno. And uh, I, I, I've come to, to seek answers. For uh, I, I've heard that that perhaps I could extend my life. Do, do you know somebody here who might help? So you have come to seek knowledge then. Very well. Mm -hmm. Stand with this one. I will take you to the scholars. Uh, Kuno uh, stands next to him and he, and he attempts to greet him. I, I am Kuno. Pleasure. It is a pleasure to meet you. We'll see soon enough. It's been pleasurable or not. Hmm. Yes. All right. And now we shall see whom else pierces the desert wind. Gyrus blue screen. So well, I'll, I'll be next. Okay. Yeah. So the glare of the sun and the whip of the hot wind, there comes a newcomer. Draped in protective clothing to belie his off-putting nature. Please, introduce yourself as well as your character, Stir. I'm going to be playing Aaron again, who in the last several months, as you may notice from his new art, has undergone some changes. Drinking several gallons of demonic blood will do that to you. So he has eyeballs grown all across his tentacles, and I, I spent more time on it, so it looks good. His halo is, has an eye on it, and he's totally into dark, moody stuff now, and wearing short boy pants. If um, only there was some person that told you to not drink all that blood. It was a good idea. <laughs> um, since the Inquisition, uh, he has completely left and disbanded that organization which was the previous campaign we played if you hadn't seen that um, and has found new motivation and a quest of his own to pursue that's my boy very well the Khanate opens before you you can see a Majitalian native standing watch and two strangers off to the side as if waiting for something as you approach, the man will squint, as he's not quite sure what you are. He will beckon you forward, and he will simply state, What is your business here, stranger? Aaron hops across the sand, his feet burning, sizzling, like calamari on the stove. He's screaming all the way, The snakes that bite their heads, they sizzle! There's too much climate here. What are you going to do about it? Ah, obviously you are here for the scholars then. Please stand with these others. I can't stand. It burns. <laughs> oh. Hops and tiptoes the whole time. Uh, yeah, use the coattail of my cloak. Kuno, Kuno uh, lifts up his alchemy jug, speaks into it, and says, Water. And his alchemy jug fills with water, and he starts pouring it his on... His alchemy uh, jug. I'm sorry, for what's making me laugh. <laughs> Go ahead, please. And he, and he starts pouring it on Aaron's feet. Oh, I, I hope this helps. I, I, too, am a creature of the water. You know nothing of the water. I, I very much do. You're a I turtle. Use... The water yes. doesn't last long around here. It's better if you use something that actually stops it. How deep have you been? Ten feet? Twenty? You mock me. Uh, I mean, I'm not a good swimmer. Some of my people are, but... I can hold my breath a real long time. Watch. You don't even breathe water. What's wrong with you? You back, Darius? I think so. All right. You loaded up. Everything good? 
Yes. All right. And thus, the final figure to break through the desert horizon towers amongst the dunes. A great orc, no doubt, from either the northern places of Dabarak or perhaps even the Badlands, walks with a lumbering gait towards the Khanate. The sun seems not to affect him. He is covered with rivets of iron, and the bottom of his jaw is covered with a great metallic plate. As the orc approaches, Dyrus, please introduce your character and yourself. Oh, what a desolate land. My name is Brotar. I am a half-orc that seeks to pursue... <laughs> Keep going. <clears throat> You're good. You're good. Keep going. I am a half-orc from Daborak, and I seek nothing but the blood of my enemies. Dope. All right. You see the Khanate rise up before you. The spirits have whispered to you as you walked the desert, slaying the weak and unworthy. They speak to you. They tell you of a true challenge to be found amongst the Khan, to be found within the secrets of the sand. It was here, after dispatching a weak, unworthy warrior, that you found a piece of parchment calling from the scholars. Following the spirit's direction, you have come to seek this challenge hidden beneath the sands. The Khanate captain keeps his hand on his weapon tightened as you approach. Can I help you, friend? Did we lose him? Ah, yes, hello. My name is Brotar. I wish to enter your encampment. Why have you come here? To enter your encampment, because it is where I must go. Are you here for the scholars as well? Ah, is that what you call them, scholars? Yes, I am here for them. Very well. Stand with these others, and I believe that will be all. Stay close. I shall lead you through my home to where your scholars can be found. Keep your weapons to yourselves. We have no reason to trust outsiders, but these scholars promise us much. We shall see if they will provide what they have promised. Good luck. You're on your own now, tentacle woman. All right. And I'm so, not a woman, bro. The captain, <laughs> the captain will lead the party through the conate. <laughs> Man, this is a huge map. Hold on, let me make this big. Oh god, it's so big. No, as, as they're being led through the uh, map, uh, Kuno attempts to to introduce and greet the the newcomer, Brotar. It is a pleasure to meet you. Well, apparently, it's not a pleasure to meet you to him. That he is under no obligation to gain pleasure from meeting me. I don't blame him. First meetings aren't always good. Oh, surely not. Surely not. I have no interest in you people. Hmm. Then that is your path. The feeling is mutual, my friend. This is the encampment for the scholars. I shall see where they are. Stay here.
guys crashed. Did he? Apparently. Oh, he disconnected. Maybe just map tools, but... Also center us, because I don't know where we went. Come on, sir. That's why you scroll out. That's what I did. I scrolled all the way out, and I can't find us. It's so big! He's here. Uh, okay. He's good. You're good. All right. So go ahead and role play for a bit while uh, Sol Dan is looking for the scholars. Well, I'm just going to go mind my own business and lean on a tent. I'll look to Kuno and, and offer an olive branch. <laughs> Everything here is unchanged, but it looks like everywhere. Hmm. Your words are cryptic. What do you mean? I don't... Bruh. Listen to me. Yes, I'm listening. There aren't... Do you know all the words? Everyone? Oh, I, I know words that you might know. And he switches to speaking to you in Aquan. Perhaps you would be more comfortable in this language. No. You... There are more words. There has to be more. Who would write all these books before they finished making all of the words? Hmm. I see your point. Yes. Do you think there is a book that contains all words? That would be amazing. We should invent it. Yes. Yes, I'll start work on it. And he'll open a book and start scribing. And then I was eavesdropping, so I had an... Well, you don't need to know all words if you understand every written language. What? Well, you see, if you have anything you can ever not read, I can read. It's one of the many benefits of being a warlock. Prove it. I'll right. hand him my, my book. Uh, what's, what's inside the book? Um, I think you have to make a will save. Arcadum. <laughs> what is what is the book? Uh, it, I've, I wrote something about it in the notes I sent you. Oh. It has a rune on it. Oh, God. All right, give me a second. <laughs> Am I, 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 no, I just... No, no, no. <laughs> Am I dying on the star? I just forget how the spell works. <laughs> is it... So I'm looking. Is it explosive runes? <laughs> You oh, put explosive oh. runes. No, 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 no. The other one. The oh, other one that's not explosive rune. Oh, the glyph of warding. Yeah. Okay. So what do I have to do? Because I read the book. <laughs> well, as you read the book, uh, you see all of the mistakes that you've ever made written there upon the pages. Well, these are just a list of my mistakes. Really? Yes. Which one is there at the top? Hmm. Well, my first mistake was letting my mentor die. The skill of yours will come in handy. I can't read a word. <laughs> well, judging by how the book works, you start reading the book, and maybe I can read it while you read it, and maybe it will reveal something for you. Okay. The three he of you are pelted back. with pebbles. <laughs> oh god, I didn't know it rained stones in the desert. Well, there are sandstorms and dust devils in the desert. Maybe it's just from that. Where I come from, it's just water. Well, you're not in safe hands here, then. This is stupid. <laughs> stupid. Well, just right. because something is not Rotar, in their knowledge. as you approach the tent to look at it, conversation is halted as four individuals exit the nearby tent. They are led by a strange horned individual who has a smiling face and a slight limp to his gait. And you see these individuals. Is it you? The Supreme Bruh, Master of the Arcane. What are you even talking about? Oh, for 
some reason his handout didn't save. Anyway, the one who approaches is a horned tiefling that carries a black book, black trench coat, and red robes. He will speak and give a gracious bow. Greetings, greetings, greetings. I am Basili, Basili Bodan, at your service. Come, come, come. You are those that we requested, yes? Hmm, I would assume. Are you the scholars, by chance? We are, we are. We each have our own, uh, 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 there's time for introductions. Yes, 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 of course. I am, as I said, Basili Bodan. I am an agent of the Lord Azalon, and I am here on his behalf. I would not consider myself a leader of the scholars, but I am the first to have arrived. Brotar, as you take a deep and invasive whiff of the tiefling, you can smell a slight edge of brimstone mixed with lavender as the tiefling has tried to cover his own smell. You also sense something else. You sense the presence of the spirits. This is indeed the individual you are to speak with. This is the man that will show you the challenge beneath the sands. Ah, ah yes, my, my colleagues. Come come forward, my friends. These are my colleagues. Oh, oh pardon me. He will then gesture. <clears throat> this is Harold Deese, Great Coven Scholar, on here on behalf of the Witches of Dalton. Harold will give a brief nod as he goes back to reading his book. This is Jock, Jock Lusterscale, Bard's College representative. And the horned dragonborn will give a, a slight bow. And this is Zorgu El, a Sharkai, representing the Mage's Guild. Zorgo El does not bow, for it is not his custom. He will instead make a strange symbol with his hand and place it across his heart. The Supreme Bra. Kuno attempts to uh, mimic him. Can I do a, a history check to see what the symbol might be? Uh, sure. Yikes. Unfortunately, the Sharkai have only been in the world for a couple years or so, and you are unfortunately are unaware of their customs. I will ask Sharkai, what is that symbol you did on your chest? It is a symbol of greeting amongst my people. Can you show me how to do it again? He will repeat the action. And I will repeat it back. As will Kuno. Hmm. With practice, I dare say that you will accomplish it as if you were a native. I appreciate. I will try my best. Mm. Now then, now then. I'm sure you have many questions, so I will attempt to get to them as quickly as possible. And as uh, Basile begins to speak, Brotar, as you sniff the air and look around, you can see that the natives of Majital, the, uh, the people that live within the Khanate, uh, watch you with careful eyes. You notice that there is a, a rather large number of guards around. The distrust is evident on their faces and actions. Kuno looks a bit nervous. He looks like he, 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 he his eyes are darting to around like dark areas and areas where he might be obstructive and obstructed. And it just looks like he's about to dart at any moment. but he's trying to keep his cool. Are you scared, Kuno? So many... I'm, I'm used to the, the shadows, the secrets. And being out in the open like this is, this is not my way. Well, sometimes you have to go out of your way to learn what your way might be. Oh, oh yes. Yes. You're right, sir. Uh, sir, friend. Now, Basile will then go into the explanation. You have been called here for a very specific reason. You see, we have uncovered what we believe to be the first in a series of steps that will unlock the mysteries of the Scarab Lords. Now, obviously, this will come with a rather intense and, and, and very, what is the word, um, 
The word you're looking for is danger. Oh, yes, thank you. There is a lot of danger around this. I will not lie to you. But if you are able to provide us with the assistance of going to these places and gathering the items that we need, we can use them to uncover a route to the ancient tomb cities beneath the sands, where untold history, arcana, and who knows what else to be found. Secrets, beings never seen before. That is why you have been called to us. Sounds exactly like something I would be want to be a part of. I care not for these secrets, but what is this danger you speak of? Oh, there is all sorts of dangers to be had. The places that we intend for you to go, they, they will be guarded by, by, by the constructs of the past. Ancient, arcane wraiths, uh, beings that perhaps even the, the scarab lords themselves. Th there is no telling what you will face. Do they bleed? As far as I know, some of them might. Ah, quite interesting. It also depends on your interpretation of bleed. Yes. What is blood if not simply essence? Well, does he only want to see the true crimson red? Because even ghosts bleed. Well then, there's much to speak of. Um, I know that your journey here must have been long and arduous, and as much as I would like to offer time to rest, I'm afraid that our window is closing. You see... The ancient lords, the scarab lords, they entrusted very few individuals for access to their various tomb cities. It is with fortune that we have uncovered one such guardian. And as it so happens, the magic around its tower is weakened during this time of the Festival of the Seven. Uh, it may only have been a few days since its conclusion, but it is with the utmost fortune that the shields have not went up again. We have found it. It is a two days travel from our current position. We ask of you to seek out this tower, to ascend it, and to find this guardian, and for whatever means that you deem necessary, retrieve a keystone. I'm ready, bruh. I am ready. This is where my path leads me. Well then, good to hear. <clears throat> well then, uh, we shall provide a map which will show you the way uh, and some instruction as well. We do not know exactly what you will face, but we have been able to do some preliminary research. We believe that the tower is protected by constructs of ancient design. And most notably, the guardian of this tower is rumored to be one of the great eyes, one of the great watchers, a being of strange, aberrant form. We only know that the creature's name is Gordon. 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 Does he bleed? I, well, I suppose so. Hmm. Are we... So, so, are we meant to kill him? That is not for us to decide. You are the professionals that we have hired. Go yes. there, retrieve the keystone by any means necessary. It should look like this, and he will show you an image of a strange elven rune wrapped within what appears to be a brass band. This is what we believe the keystone to look like. You may keep any other treasure that you find. Retrieving this keystone, we shall, by our collective factions, beseech you 5,000 gold pieces. And what do you do with the keystones? Well, the intention is that we will use the keystones to triangulate the position of a tomb city. And 
with grace, send you there as well to unlock its secrets. There is... Truth be told, our interest is not entirely academic. As you may or may not be aware, the old elven ways are beginning to gain clout and momentum. I have been sent by Lord Azalon to specifically seek alternate methods that we might quell the rise of the Itanus Imperium before it is too late. Mm, squabbles of men or elves. Well, if that is their way, but I, I seek... I, 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 I seek only my answers, and I will do as you will, but I, I don't want to be involved in your bureaucracy. You might want to be careful of those mindsets, Kuno. When you get your answers, you won't be able to read them if you don't know all of the words. Well, that's not oh. what I was getting at, but... That is wise. Yes, I see. So I should become involved with the lives of men to find the secrets of men yes no the problem is if you ignore things that you think would never come to you they do in the end not if i hide <laughs> i'm a good hider well, I silly. Uh, yes i presume these shall be my allies for this great quest uh yes only if you would have us. It's always nice to have time a Time shall tell. Let us be on our way. Oh, I would agree. I, I haven't that much time left. Uh, the time is of the essence. Let us, let us proceed post haste. All right. Is that the consensus of the party? I want to see what Harold is reading. Ah, do you ask him? Yes. Oh, yes, hello. He will then turn the paper. I am currently uh, tracking a few things. Uh, specifically, uh, <laughs> this is quite embarrassing, but I'm not entirely sure if I'm able to uh, appropriate the right amount of funds in order to uh, provide my part of the payment. Fear not, fear not, fear not. I plan to send as many letters as possible back to headquarters. I am sure that you will see that the witches of Dalton are... Well, they are. They will provide. Do not worry. All right. I'm not even that interested in treasure. I mean, it, it will help my journey, but knowledge is, is my true goal. That is what I'm here for as well. Mm. A noble effort. Knowledge awaits us all. But I believe you're... Orkish Brotar. Yes, excuse me. Brotar is correct. The sooner that we get started, the better. Mm. I'm ready to go then. Is that the consensus of the party? Uh, crazy Squid Girl? Yeah. And okay. Kuno, Kuno <laughs> notices that Aaron's feet are probably a bit dry at the moment I'm, now. I'm standing halfway in the tent. On him. He's using my coattail before. Yeah, your coattail is wet because I totally poured water on it. Well, it's probably already dry now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, Kuno, Kuno every once in a while pours some water on Aaron's feet until he tells him to stop. All right. In that case, we shall now transfer to the travel maps. Time to try. I can't wear shoes, Ashley. It does not fit. Uh, give me two seconds. I have to go to the bathroom. It doesn't fit okay. the pop culture of uh, the, the deep That's sea. Girls. Yeah, like, sea people don't wear shoes. Kuno's not wearing shoes. It's, it's like the deep sea has its own form of, like, K-pop. And what's cool to wear and what's cool to do. So I wear boy shorts and I don't wear shoes. Is it also cool to look like a girl? Oh, actually, no, I just I happen to look. It's just, it just happen. <laughs> like a lot of us do because we're squids and we're very <laughs> slender. Okay. <laughs> actually, I lied. I am wearing boots of elven kind. They're magic, so I just don't have a sprite for them.
You're ruining my immersion. You have Where's the DM? Wearing. He's in the bathroom. We're lost without the DM. What do we do? Uh... Dyrus brought a bottle to pee in. Why didn't he? I did? Yeah. The one you're talking in. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So then, like, <laughs> as it gets, like, higher and higher, it'll sound different and different. Until, like, it's bubbling, you know? Yeah, until just like... <laughs> Kill the NPCs before he gets back. I cast... Lightning Bolt! Magic Missile! A stab of... Okay, I'm back. Welcome back. Everyone's still here? What, your washroom? Wash? Oh, yes, I did. I forget. So weird calling it a washroom. But you wash yourself in there. I don't. Not every, not every bathroom has a bath. That's why it's a washroom. So when you when you're looking for a house to rent and it says three or four bathrooms, you're gonna call it three or four washrooms. Yeah. Is that a Canadian thing? Yeah. Oh. Canadian okay. washrooms. Yeah, that makes sense. Do y'all have toilets? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck, Ronnie? Like, <laughs> I just don't know that much about Canada, okay? It's not a, it's not a, th it's a first world, yes, they have toilets. No, we use the pit system, you know, where you just have like a hole and it's like an elevated ground. So that See, that's what I thought. Yeah. You don't need flushing that way. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. All right. And thus, you begin to travel. Here's your travel music. All right, let's get started. Switching map. Boo boo boo. Scoopity doo. Skirt skirt. Skirt. All right. Using the map, you're able to make steady progress. However, the sands constantly shift. And now, you will have to depend on your skills to see you through this harsh wasteland. Everyone, please, make a survival check for me. Okay. Good rolls, dweebs. All right. Shut up, dweeb. It would seem that this particular party are hardened travelers, having wandered Kalkatesh long enough to not get lost. Is this your current formation, or would you like to readjust it? Um, I feel I'd like... I'd like to stay near the back. Kuno's certainly always trying to keep ahead of the group, uh, even so much that anytime he can get near something that he can hide behind, he will dart over to it. I'm walking on DeVale's dress. <laughs> every still. step. Yeah, every step. <laughs> he keeps my, keep pulling on you. This is our formation. <laughs> All right. The light is glaring. And blinding. <sighs> you do not see any enemies, however, and you are able to maintain course. The two days of travel pass without any true interruption. However, up ahead, at the end of the second day, 
You see a swirling storm of sand with but a single place of stillness. The stillness is unnatural compared to the rest of the storm of sand, leading you to believe that that must be your entry point. And through this static, you're able to see a forlorn tower. Do you enter the sandstorm? Yes. With courage, you walk forward. And now I shall place you there. I hope there's a dungeon and or a dragon. <laughs> he said it. The name of the game. He said it. Name drop. All right. You have pierced the sandstorm. And up ahead, the tower stands as a testament to the strength of those that once built it. For even here, against the anger of the storm, the heat, and the wind, it stands nearly as new, untouched, it would seem, by the royals of time. A door atop a platformed set of steps can be seen sealed shut for what it appears to be now but you spot no other danger what do you do i'm gonna make a, an investigation check check to see if there's any like anything written on like the stones or anything okay go ahead you can move up uh, those stones in front of you and in general i could just move around okay well go ahead uh, as you investigate these stones, you see that they are simply a part of what used to be a wall. It seems that whatever magic has maintained the tower's integrity did not extend to these walls. Hmm. I'm just going to go near the door then. Wait. Do not go so quickly, friend. We need to investigate. We need to hide. I already have. There's nothing on the walls. But enemies may abound. These are wicked lands. Do you see anything? Rotar seeks blood. Uh, perception check of 21. You see no enemies. There are no creatures here except mm -hmm. for the four of you, it would seem. Do I see any, like, scorpions or anything on the ground? Any small? Well, as you approach... You do not see any scorpions, but you see that there are runes written on the doorway. I read the runes. As you read the runes, normally I would say they're in a language that you do not understand, but then your eyes flash with the power of your pact, and what was unknown becomes known. The runes state, Here lies Gordon, guardian of the bane of man. Let they that walk within this hallowed hall. No deference. All right, excuse my English. What is deference? I would assume that's like... Deference means respect. Basically. All right. Rotar, you lift your spirit reaver. As you lift your axe, its blade shines in the light. And you bring down the weapon on the door. The door is bitten by your axe and cuts deep but does not give way well brutish strength gets you places sometimes but not all the time it's a good thing I could read the runes before you did that but what is in there is probably something you will like to work Are we going inside? Who know? Are you just gonna stand behind the wall the whole time? I'm, I'm hiding. If there's danger, I'll jump out. Uh, are you hiding from me? Or are you hiding from a door? Are you scared of sand? I don't. There's sand everywhere. It's a yes. Just hide behind Aaron. Uh, 
I'll be behind this cactus. Go inside. All right. So the door uh, is damaged by your attack, but it still remains uh, sturdy enough. The door has a handle, and the runes would say what I've just spoken. Mm -hmm. Kuno will scoot up close to the wall, and, you know, slide along it, and look at the door. <laughs> Brother, what does it say? With a resounding slam, the door is kicked open. Oh! Shattering against the great boot of Brotar. You want to know what it says, Aaron? Yeah, bro. You know all the words. Mm, I'll relay and what... the way is revealed. You have... Like, I didn't actually listen. You know, all right, then <laughs> Arcanum's going to have to repeat it to you. Basically, he is the guardian of the Bane of Man, and basically anyone who enters is going to have to show respect, or as in... He's probably going to want to beat us up, since we're not showing respect to his tower. Oh, Bruh. Yeah. All right. But I'm the only man here. As the door is kicked open, you walk into what is considered a pretty luxurious place. An elegant carpet lays placed with on the stone floor, and a desk with a ledger also sits in front of you, opened. And within it, you can see an ancient elven there are written names of visitors. The names, for those of you with any proficiency with history, will notice that they are old names, names that aren't used anymore, archaic ones, with an imperial lilt to them. Rotar. Jesus. You hear a strange humming just beyond the air, and it is a hum that you have felt before. You sense the presence of a spirit. Ah, oh, it seems we are not alone. Well, the scholars did to tell us that we wouldn't be alone in here. The eye on Eren's crown opens up and looks around, giving him true sight. True sight reveals that there are no false walls, nor hidden illusions. Have it for ten minutes. I'm gonna see a ghost and prove that they aren't real, in at least one of your campaigns. That ghosts aren't Rotar. real. Rotar. The spirit's presence is felt from this chair. As you approach, you begin to see a form writhe and sort of manifest within your sight. Something that has happened before whenever a spirit manifests itself. You see an elven spirit, fully adorned in the armaments of the ancient elven ways. He carries with him the wings of of a wraithborn, showing that he has not fulfilled his purpose in life, and thus shall do so in death. You can see that ethereal chains bind this individual, or this spirit, to the desk. And as you possess the ability to speak with them, you may speak with him now if you wish. What is your name? The spirit looks up, surprised, its eyes moving across your form. <sighs> Elonis. Why are you still here? <sighs> the key is not safe. The key is not safe. The Lord of the Tower laments. His mind is broken. I 
must guard the way. Does the, does the owner of this tower bleed? Yes. Please. Good question. Do you wish to be free, or will you stand in my way? I wish to be free of my chains. Question, is this a desk? Yes, it is. Rotar is going to grab the desk and toss it across the room. Okay. Um, well, as as you begin to lift the desk, you notice that the chains are ethereal, but if you want to throw the desk, that's fine. All right. You throw the desk, and it shatters into wooden splinters. <laughs> Bruh. But it seems that the Wraith is not free. It, get, is, wraith. is Brotar... I'm sorry, is the Brotar the only one who can see this Wraith? Correct. But all of you are hearing what Brotar is saying. So it's obvious he's talking to something. Okay, so Bruh, it's crazy. You're having a hallucination. You need to calm down from all those orc drugs you took. The Wraith will then speak, uh, realizing what you've done. My chains cannot be broken while my lord yet lives. Please. It hurts. It hurts. Then I shall free you of this master of the tower. Also to my allies around me, I may be mad, but I am not stupid. You know what? Well, I think throwing tables is somewhat stupid. Brotar ignores that and just walks <laughs> forward. You're walking through a wall. <laughs> Wait, is this a wall? Yeah, I, I know it's hard to see, but you see the stone here? Oh. The stone is the wall. This is a door, and this is a door. Yeah, so that's there. You go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're good. So as you approach, He's not stupid. As you approach this door and you open it, you enter a hallway. And along this hallway, you can see that there is some furniture and other things of that nature. But you also hear something to the north: the sound of clanking iron and scraping on stone. Well, the only reason I want to follow the orc is to make sure I can actually read stuff before he breaks in. We, we mustn't go too deeply, too quickly. Well, we must move silently. Have, you have to control the orc, Kuno. Good luck with that. Oh, I do not control the path of others. I simply... You simply suggest and then just watch. Yes, yes. Mm. Alright, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you guys round the corner... One second, please. Okay, almost done. As you round the corner, there, you see a strange creature kind of limping towards you, ancient and rusted in some places. You see that there are several of them moving in a strange unison. You see these creatures. They roil with an arcane presence. And upon noticing you round the corner, ready their claws and summon their energy. The time for mercy has passed. 
So let it begin. All right, it's time to roll initiative. That's the song that's playing. One second. Giving you a second. Where is my, where, where is my initiative number? I got you. I got you. Just, just I'm button on your thing. No, I, 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 I roll initiative for you guys, so you don't have to worry about it. Oh, okay. Using okay. The system. It, and you know I have advantage. advantage. Yep, that's already programmed in there. Okay. Well, me, me and Aaron's rolls were definitely better on that one. All right. Seems that fortune was not with you this time. The arcane constructs go first. They hold up their hands. They focus themselves. But before I get to go, Brotar, because of your level, you may choose to enter rage as combat starts. Would you like to? I do not feel angry yet. Very well. They will raise their hands, and they will fire forth a round of arcane vaults at Brotar. Your AC is 16. So that's a hit and a miss, two hits, and another miss. So that's a total of 24, 35 damage. Wait. Uh, did that, uh, okay. Yeah, there that went go. through. Yeah, you're good. The arcane bolts pound against you, Brotar. Your blood flows from your wounds, but you are barely even shaken by such an attack. Your momentum does not stop so easily. Aaron. Well, Aaron, something's happening up there, and Brotar's just took some magic into his face. I've never been here before. <laughs> he shrugs. Neither have I. Oh. Okay. <laughs> uh. I want to try to dispel magic on Arcane One. Okay. Seems appropriate. Which. I don't know what I do for that in fifth. Ability check using your spell casting modifier. The DC equals blah 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 plus the spell level. Does it even work in fifth? Can I make like an arcane check to see if I'm doing anything useful before just make I it, do just, it? Just just make the roll. Okay. Yeah, you're good. Wait. Oh, I see. Yeah, you see it. If it's above a third level spell, just roll that instead since you're casting on a creature. So it's just d20 plus... I'm sorry that... I, I'm sorry, I'm the idiot. It's d20 plus wisdom. You're not supposed to be the idiot. You're supposed to be I the know. smart one. I wasn't ready. Oh my god, sir. Oh, hold on. Let me see if I can update this so that they can see the health bars all the time. Yeah. Uh, I'm not quite sure how to do that, though. This is new. I can actually see the HP of my enemies. Uh, that's... That's something that you, you're you not supposed to be able to do, but and the only way I can make strict token ownership not a thing and not have it be a pain in the ass is by doing so, that. Ah, I think it's stable HP? So just no, try no. and not look at the enemy's portrait, then. Right? Yeah. Okay. I can't seem to get it to pop up all the time. Unfortunate. I'll scroll over them a lot, chat room, so that you can see things. Okay. Twelve. It seems that the Dispel Magic does not have any effect on the Construct, but not because it normally wouldn't. You just simply didn't roll high enough. Anything else? That's all I can do, Kuno. I think. All right. Kuno, let's see. Okay. Kuno uh, 
darts up here and with two hands th uh, chucks his his harpoon at the arcane construct number one, the nearest one. And let's see, where is it? And then he unleashes a radiant sunbolt on the same one. Both will find their mark, and the creature will take then damage. He, then he um, pulls out another spear, but with his bonus action, he spins a key and fires two more radiant sunbolts. All right. Do you have a description for what your radiant sunbolt actually looks like? Uh, I figure since it doesn't shoot from his hands, it's, oh, well, not, not from like his palms or anything. It's more like he directs his, uh, I would say even points his weapon at it, but mainly he's pointing his arms towards the enemy and it uh, shoots out basically from his body through his arms straight outward like a So a key a blast. Bolt. Sure. Okay. All right. Anything else? Uh, that's it for me. The veil. I will go and open this door so I can actually stand here. Just kind of have it open. All right. You open the door and you see a bathroom. And then I will fire my arrows at number three. Fire away. All right, you pull back your eldritch bow and ethereal arrows fire outwards. Finding purchase in Arcane Construct 3 as it takes massive damage. And then, uh, are you able to five foot step after combat in 5 yeah, I forget. Negative. All right. Is that it for you? But I mean, you still have plenty more movement you can use. And then I'm going to hide behind here and close the door. Oh, you can't close it. You can only open right. it and because you already used your item interaction. All right. So, well, I guess not close it, but like they can't see me. Yeah, you're this, you, yeah. you have cover. Don't worry. Yeah, cover. yeah. Yeah. All right. Brotar, slow and steady, wins the race. I charge straight into the three of them. You got a battle cry for me? This. I like it. You're doing a great job, by the way, Dyrus. I really like the voice for this character. Alright, so you. <laughs> <laughs> so does Ashley apparently. <laughs> okay, that was great. Go ahead, Dyrus. Bro, 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 they won't bleed. charge into the fray. You should have your attack macro there for you, and all set up for you. Oh, he blue screen apparently. Oh man, what the heck? I'm supposed to blue screen. Alright, just uh, type type what he was gonna do and then he can do the rolls in the chat and someone else wait. Yeah someone else can roll. I can I can yeah. I can roll for it. Yeah. You wanna reaver strike arcane one? Okay. Do you want to rage? He's not angry. Okay, I guess he's not angry. That's fine. All right, uh, let me do that for him. He wants to. And he said extra attack three. Okay, so let me just do two reavers, spear reavers. Oh, fuck! I have to do it over here. All right, spear reaver. That's a slam on number one, and then spear reaver on the other one. Extra attack. Okay, that is a seventeen damage. Oh Jesus Christ! Two resounding blows from Brotar as the op as the axe rises and falls, smashing into the arcane constructs. The arcane constructs 
Push to the limit. Attempt to escape from Brotar. Teleporting. Brotar takes 28 damage. His wounds are many, but he is still unconcerned. Aaron. Aya. Aya. Wait. Are you sure you've never been here before? Yes, I am positive, but I have no re recollections of this place at all. Okay. <laughs> Why? It's not important. I will cure wound my giant goofy friend with a third level spell slot. Rotar's wounds are closed. Do you describe your spell in any way specifically? Um. No, I just touch his back and he gets healed. Healing's lame in D&D. &D. Arcadum. Anything else? <laughs> no, that's it. Wait, you can, I can still move, right? Yeah. Okay, then I'll, I'll go back over here. No, I'm gonna go... How much did I use to get here? I was there. 15. I'm gonna walk over to him and say... Because I've back? seen you here before. I am back. I, I got blue screen three times in a row. I have no idea what's going on with my computer. It could blue screen as I speak. Feel That's messed up. How do you? How's your computer so broken? I don't know. I'm gonna complain if it does blue screens four times in one day. All right. Next we have is Kuno. By the All way, right. what happened, Dyrus? You ran in, you slammed some nerds, you got uh, damaged as they nerded out on you by teleporting, and then Aaron healed you. Okay. Go ahead, Kuno. All right, Kuno sprints in, and he walks across the uh, the couch here. His his footsteps silent. Ooh. And and uh, this is all just style, nothing mechanical. But he's no, just I got like, you. style it up. He, he 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 taking his spear into both hands, he gets right up into this arcane construct's face and jabs his spear into its torso. I would have done a flip off the wall too. And it strikes, piercing through its torso and into its core. The arcane construct falls to pieces and begins to short circuit with arcane energy. <laughs> And then let's see here. With his second attack, he will um, uh, send out a Radiant Sunbolt to Arcane Construct 3. And that's going to miss most likely. That will miss. Uh, but let's see. Does he have to attack the hit with it? Let's see. I think it's just if it's used after using. Yeah. Okay. So he's going to spend a key and lash out with two more radiant sun bolts. That's going to miss. I'm going to hit that one more. And hopefully that hits. And that will miss. Ah. Unfortunate. All right. He's just going to stand stalwart. The veil. I will. Why is Aaron standing in my doorway? Wait, did he did he blue screen again? Yeah, yeah. and you can walk through me. Holy shit! Yeah, but I wanted dude. to stand in the doorway. You're in the way. No, I came to ask you a question. Didn't you ask it right here? I came back. Anyways, I'm gonna shoot an arrow at Construct Three, and then. If he's not dead, I'll shoot at him again. 
uh, that will drop him as an ethereal arrow finds its mark, and the creature explodes from the inside. And I'll shoot it at the last construct. That one will not find its mark. The arcane warding. Too much for the arrow to penetrate. And then I'll go back into the bathroom. Back to the bathroom. Uh, it's Dyrus's turn. Um, Alright, I'll have to take over here. Uh, Brotar is unconcerned with these enemies. Indeed. Prepare to be destroyed. I wonder, do you bleed? The axe finds purchase, damaging the construct's outer coating. Desperate, the arcane construct will fire at Kuno. However, all of its attacks will have disadvantage. And they miss. Aaron. Um... Back to the bathroom. What's up? I'm gonna need a minute. That's I, fine. I'm gonna see if I can fix this. Here, back. Toll the dead with wisdom saving throw. Toll the dead? Roger that. Yeah. Fail? That's a fail. Damage me up, my dude. Ouch. Toll of the dead. Is it sonic damage? Or thunder necrotic. damage? Necrotic. It's necrotic? Alright. I'm not sure how to describe that for a robot. I guess the rust yeah. is just intensified. Just rusts and... Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it rusts up. Go ahead, Kuno. Alright, uh, I assume I can uh, occupy this dead space. Yeah. Yeah. So I just step up to him. Oh, glory. Bam, bam. Oops, my bad. Didn't mean to do that. Okay. And then I follow it up with... No need. Um, the two strikes with the spear oh, are okay. enough to render the creature destroyed as it falls backwards onto the ground, short-circuiting. And finally, going dark. And just as soon as it had begun, the battle is over. And I suppose we'll uh, give Dyrus a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Good job. Got any PC analysts oh. in the chat? Thank you, friend. Oh, yes, I, I thought so. I I expected to keep my distance, but there's so few vantage points in us. They're watching you. Oh, is there somebody watching? For someone that's so afraid, you sure seem to run in there. I'm not afraid. I simply wait for my opportunity. You are 100% afraid. Man, I wonder what's going on. I... I I'm trying to think if Map Tools has ever caused a blue screen, but I don't think so. I would doubt it. He's had blue screen problems before this, so. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Huh. It might be overheating, uh, dusting, I don't know. <laughs> it's dusting. Maybe it was prawn. Give him, give him some time. Anyway. Hey. So, how you guys like the story so far? We killed some guys already, so it's pretty neat. It's pretty neat. Yep. Yeah. I really like Dyrus's voice for his character. It's there's something about the uh, 
the very calm and matter of fact berserker orc. Someone thought someone in the chat thought it was a voice modular. No, it's just a cup. Exactly. That's all you need is a cup. Can I get a can I get a battle cry on you guys? <clears throat> hmm. You will regret this. <laughs> nice battle cry. <laughs> and then Ashley's <laughs> delayed and then you just hear Yeah, she laughs. Dude, that was so good, man. <laughs> don't make fun of her laugh. I don't want her to, want her to stop. No, we're not making fun of the No, no, laugh. just we're stir specifically. Nobody oh, okay. nobody cared who I was until I picked up the cup. Well, we can't control how Stir makes fun of his own wife. I can and we're I We're going will. through a rough patch. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't played D&D in like two weeks. It has been a long time. Oh, no. Is D&D the thing that holds you guys together? It's the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> they, you the only play way your to... marriage? <laughs> no, they roleplay being brothers. That's the only way they can keep their relationship together. <laughs> Why even b bother being married if you can't play D&D &D together? I know, right? That's what I'm saying. Divorce and dragons. <laughs> I think my favorite thing is the uh, Guy Fieri like, dragon that's like Dungeons and Dives. Good stuff, Hell, man. Yeah. Dungeons, Probably. Dragons, and Dives? Yeah. just goes around looking at other dungeon masters and raiding those. Well, this is a drive. Well, this is definitely <laughs> a dime. Um, this one's just one you dive into. <sighs> I feel bad for Dyrus too. Anyway, chat room, if you have any questions about the game, feel free to ask. Now's the time, I suppose. <laughs> Escape from Flavortown. <laughs> it's better than I thought. <laughs> Dungeons and diners and dragons and drivers and dives. Escape from Flavortown. It's good stuff. <laughs> is, Aaron, is Aaron wearing boy shorts? I believe so. No, it, now it's more like a, a whole wetsuit kind of onesie. Oh, yeah, yeah, because you're a... But, it's but a they still are bird. short shorts, yeah. I mean, they're pretty short. I mean, that's... Yeah. Rumper, that's what it was called. It's it's deep folk fashion. Yeah, those are some rump-hugging shorts, let me tell you. After the Inquisition, uh, Aaron went back home and got way back into a deep folk fashion. Wanted to bring it to the surface, you know, re represent his culture, even though no one gets it. No one and, gets it. You know, just not wear shoes and have tight shorts on. Yeah, hot pants. Arcadum, are you having a good day? Yes. My question is, what does Ashley's armor do? Man, she already knows. You guys having My... fun so far? Hell yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Hey, I'm chat. not trying to find my dad. He's irrelevant. What's your favorite type of spaghetti, chat? What is a spaghetti, chat? Oh. You good, I, Dyrus? I think so. Angel what? hair isn't a spaghetti! Yes, it is. How it's is it not a spaghetti? tiny spaghetti. No, it's not. Penne isn't a type of spaghetti either. Lasagna isn't a type of spaghetti either. Okay. I feel what like about you're those... passionate about this. What about those fat noodle spaghettis? Are you going to say that's not spaghetti? What do you mean fat noodle spaghetti? They're like thicker than regular like spaghetti. udon? Or it's called an udon noodle. Yeah, American udon. Spaghetti is a type of noodle. What you put on it is what makes it a different type of spaghetti. There's spaghetti carbonara, there's spaghetti and meatballs, there's spaghetti bolognese. I feel like he's very Ragu. passionate about this. Mm -hmm. I'll fight you. Lasagna is just spaghetti. <laughs> I found the Italian. Swaggetti and meme balls. 
That's the easiest time out of my life. <laughs> All right. We good? We good, Dyrus? You should. Oh wait, you disconnected. Yeah, no, no, broken. he's fucked. All right. Well, it looks like Dyrus is out of commission. Yikes. Fuck. I healed him. You wasted your heal. Well, I, I did. You didn't heal his Windows 10. I suppose that's that. I mean, he can't play, so I guess... I mean, he's in the call. Well, yeah, but he... he... I'd have to, like... It's not like he can watch the stream, right? Because his computer's busted up. Oh, oh, there he goes. Does he have a laptop or something? I don't know. I wonder if he blue screens without going into map tool. He was saying that it was blue screen on, on startup. Oh, no. So this computer is just fried right now. Bad news bears. That is bad news. Well, if he has another computer, he could just set it up real quick. <laughs> to the library! I'm still hung up on Escape from Flavortown. <laughs> That's my kind of campaign. <laughs> Escape from Flavortown. Guess I'll go back through these questions. Oh, you want to talk about spaghetti some more? <laughs> oh, I... Now, here's the question. All right. Yeah. When you make your spaghetti, do oh you put God. the... Uh, like... You put all the spaghetti into all the sauce and mix it up and then put it on the plate? Or do you put it on the plate and then put the sauce on top? Well, actually, what I do when I make my spaghetti is you get a crock pot and you make the sauce in the crock pot. And you slow cook it for about 12 hours. Mm -hmm. And then you make the pasta when the slow cooked uh, sauce is almost ready. Right, but do you then... What do you do? Do you just put the spaghetti in the sauce and let the moisture of the sauce cook the spaghetti, or do you boil it separately and then drain it? Well, you drain the sauce. Uh, you mean you drain the spaghetti and then you put it in the crock pot for like half an hour and then you serve it. You let the spaghetti go for another half hour? For like just a little bit of time. As long as it's mm. being slow cooked. Man. Man, I... I... I can't remember the last time I had spaghetti. I haven't had spaghetti in a while. Probably like a month or two. But if you've never had crock pot spaghetti before, you should make that shit. Sure, sure for cooking stream when, but like, <laughs> would you, would my camera just be on a crock pot for like twelve hours? Hey, why not? I mean, people are into that. I have no life. Yeah, you do. You play ping pong. I get to play tomorrow. I'm so excited. We couldn't play. We had to switch our date because you wanted to play ping pong so bad. Remember that? Wait. Switch what day? What are you talking about? Like, the date that these start. Oh. Sundays, remember? Oh, I only wanted to switch because I couldn't... Yeah, because you I, I go to pong. sleep really early. Yeah, to play ping pong. Well, that didn't help, but I'm moving soon and I'm not going to play ping pong Sunday mornings anymore. I just... I like to be in bed early because I'm an old man. No, you're not. You're a sick man. <laughs> I think Stir is a good man. Yeah. <sighs> The only thing that can I can correlate to him being an old man is that he likes Denny's. Who doesn't like Denny's? Denny's I mean, is fine. 
the only reason I like Denny's is because me and the experience me and Stir had. But... Denny's is better than IHOP because I've never been to Denny's and they conveniently forgot your sausage or your no. bacon. You only go to Denny's for the experiences, not the experience, because of the experience, man. Dude, we saw we've been pie. to Denny's twice, and the amount of time it would take to tell both Denny's stories? <laughs> like, come on, there were pirates and everything. And Denny's, you can get a Minions cup. We spilled a drink, and then we used all the paper towel, paper napkins, and then we asked the waitress for more napkins, and she just looked at us, and then <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, didn't she come back and give us like a an encyclopedia size? Dude, stack she gave of us napkins? a fucking stack, dude. <laughs> didn't they change IHOP's name to IHOB? Yeah, no, just a few locations, just promotional thing. Or they just haven't rolled it out to everywhere yet. But IHOP still it? sucks. But it's the wand of pancakes. I still feel that I think I like Denny's better. Yeah, it's way better. Yeah. I ain't never had to. I ain't never been to. I'm just saying, I ain't never been to a Denny's and had to say, "Where's my bacon?" That's all I'm saying. Hiya. <laughs> Blah. Denny's. That's so weird that you get that. <laughs> I, I I want my bacon. I want it. Where is it? Give Where's it to me. My, where's my bacon? Like, how did that conversation go with the waiter? Did you just, you just like, excuse, 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 excuse me? <laughs> no, I'm a freaking, I'm a weenie wuss. I so just wouldn't ask for it. So you don't say anything? Oh, okay. No, I'm just like, oh, okay. I guess I just ordered two eggs because that's what a, a 300 pound man does. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm going to IHOP. I'm just ordering two eggs. Thank you for the two eggs. <laughs> You should have called him a bitch. <laughs> and then you should have thrown the eggs at him. And then you should have said, wouldn't have this tasted better with bacon? And then you leave before he calls the police. Yeah, you like run. Yeah. Out the door. Actually jump through the window. So is Dyrus is getting a laptop? That... Well, I said, do you have a laptop or anything else? And he said, yeah, one sec. Okay. So maybe. Maybe he's going to steal an Emeru's computer. Hello? 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 I am almost certain. Well, actually, I can't be. I'm not that smart. It's just coincidence. I, I, right. I, really, I really don't think that map tools is causing a blue screen i mean it's it's probably not it's I mean, probably it something else that's conflicting with other shit let's continue on while he's still alive we're wasting time chop chop yep let's do it um i i haven't blues i haven't opened map tools because i'm scared of blue screen do it pussy all right wait you you haven't it says you're connected yeah, well, I was that was the me before. Oh, that, that was the still, before me. I'm I'm just sitting at my desktop right now, looking at some stuff. Cause what it what it that error means is it says that there's only two things. It's either overheating, which it shouldn't be because it just started, and the other thing was it does it to prevent data loss. Sounds like you have, might have a memory leak. How how would I know that? Just check on task manager. Or do I check on the task manager? Process. Uh huh. Hmm. Or tool details desktop. rather, and just check for like memory and like CPU usage. Um, it's like using 5% memory. Uh, memory loss is when a, a program has like some bad coding or something and basically the memory just keeps stacking and stacking and stacking. So if it just keeps going up and up and up or some program does that. 
Okay, I'm gonna open map tools. I'm gonna watch it. Okay. I mean, the map being big shouldn't be the problem. Like, it really shouldn't. <laughs> nah, I doubt it's map tools. My CPU usage is going up. Now it's not responding. And... I'm at 45% CPU usage for map tools. Oh, wow, that's a lot. Well, which version are you running right now? Well, it's actually map tools isn't responding now. It's saying the provider host. Well, I is... think that's because uh, maybe the one that was connected hasn't disconnected. No, it disconnected. Did you just connect, Darius? I think Darius might have to update his map tools. Shouldn't have let him connect if he wasn't on the latest version. Yeah. Oh, all right. Yeah, it won't let you connect if you're not on the right version. Never mind, dude. You, you there, Dyrus? I think he blue screened. That's not good. Maybe it is map tools. But, but, but why? I mean, it, it doesn't make any sense. Well, maybe he should just reinstall it. Man. I, 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 I have never had anyone blue screen because of map tools, and I've been doing this for like eight years. PCs work in weird ways, depending on what programs you have, what you've done to it, software you have. I mean, I... Maybe it's this antivirus. And I got more combat coming, and just... I. Don't worry. We can fix it. We can get through it. Correlation does not equal causation. him reinstalling map tools doesn't work then. Any uh pushes up glasses IT professionals in the chat? See, the thing is I'm trying to think about what it could be and it's just like Yeah, that's a good idea, Stir. Just uninstall uh Java. I think that the late the NERPS map tool has Java built into it. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, that's why may, I don't know. Just maybe the Javas are doing a weird thing. Yeah, it could be conflicting. So I know in we the past we uh, downloaded a, a million versions of it. Yeah. All right, Darius, can you hear us? Yes. All right, go and find any versions of Java that you have, delete those, and then delete map tools, and then re-download NERFs. Job. But I've honestly... Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I have uninstalled map tools, and I am uninstalling Java right now. Okay. We can also just continue without using map tools. For you. Like, just describe... Yeah, I mean, you could just open the stream and. Because I, I have like a the short delay. So it oh, yeah, that too. Away. Yeah. Yeah, Honestly, if you'll yeah, just do control, that. control me for me, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll, we'll explore this floor and then the next floor has like a lot of stuff going on in it, but. We could stop there. I think that's a natural point, so let's at least get to the rest of this floor. Some stuff to go over. Okay. Wait, what's happening? Uh. Dyrus is going to play through watching the stream, and I'm just going to control his token. So He's not going to try uninstalling stuff? Well, I, I am, but... Yeah. 
Oh, the, yeah. There's only so many times I can freeze in blue screen before I think my computer has <laughs> some kind of side effect. I don't know how that works. Um, I'm I'm doing it right now though. Um, one question though, when we, wait, do you guys hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause every time I don't hear something, I feel like I blew screen. <laughs> don't worry. Um, you got, it, it's a Windows EXE, right? Huh? The, 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 the from, the from the site. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it should be Windows EXE. It should okay. Be it's not specified if it's 64 or 32, if that matters, I don't know. No. Doesn't specify. Does anybody even have 32 anymore? I don't know. Probably not. Like, is that even like a realistic thing anymore? <laughs> Who's, whose computer is that old? Oh, maybe Windows Defender is like. I don't know. I mean, if it's blue screening on startup, then I don't think it's map tools, right? Oh, what do you mean on startup of map tools? No. Oh, did you mean startup of map tools or startup of your computer when it blue screens? Oh, it blue it blue screens only when I start up map tools. Oh, that's what and I mean by startup. Mainly, well, when I open map tools, it's fine, but the CPU goes up to twenty four for a second, that goes back down. But then when I connect, that's when everything goes to shit. Yeah, it sounds like a Java memory error, actually. I think that's what it is. So now that you've uninstalled the other versions of Java, and then you have the version that NURPS has, it should be good now. Maybe, uh... Since, like, it still says he's connected, but hasn't disconnected, should you, like, save this and then, like, stop the campaign and then reopen it? So maybe... Yeah, I yeah, can, can you do that? that? Yeah, 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 that would help a lot. Let me... Cause then, it, cause it just freezes me, cause there's someone else connected, probably. Okay, let me let me do that. Disconnect everybody. Hold on, saving. All right, disconnecting server. Okay. Restarting server. Oh, fucking scary, dude. I don't want to have to, like, change computers and fucking do everything again. I believe in you. I thought I did this because I uninstalled Realm Royale. <laughs> Just fucking <laughs> coming back with a vengeance. You uninstalled Realm Royale? Yeah. They, if you see the t the patch they have on PTR, that might not go through. I'm I'm just tired of seeing. I'm just I feel like it's legal all over again. Like I'm getting abused. Feels bad, man. But um, yeah. I, I all I have is Java eight, and I I think they're all uninstalled. Didn't we have to install a certain Java for this? Oh. Uh, have to anymore. No. Oh, okay. oh, you NERPS don't. installs Java with its installation, which is why I was saying it may be two Javas were trying to do the same thing. Oh, that's probably it. Here, I'm going to try again. All right. Um, let's see if I disconnect. All right, hope this works. I'm gonna crash or it's it's just connecting. If 
it takes us long, I'm probably going to blue screen. If it, well, if you're taking that long to connect, that means it's... Could not load campaign connection time down. Ah, uh, that means you don't have a password or something set in, right? Uh, uh, re put re input the information. Here, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to starting soon for everybody. Hold on. All right, go to uh, go to our chat. Yep, I re I um copy and pasted. Yeah. Hold on, let me do it again. Ah, uh, at the wrong port. Nah, that's, that's it. What... Okay. Nothing is blue screened. Yeah, I think it's just double Java, actually. That makes sense. If I don't crash again. <laughs> well, if you've connected, then we've already passed the first hurdle, right? Yeah, it's loading. Slowly. But surely. Did you say the first turtle? Oh yeah, because it would have to re reload. <laughs> I think it'd have to re download the main big map. Yeah, yeah. Starting the catch. yeah, I think it maybe it ran twice, so it like overloaded my PC <laughs> or something. I don't know. And then just well, froze. Same thing happens if you have two antiviruses on your computer. They basically fight with each other. Yeah, I closed one. And that was one of the reasons for the crash. The middle, so two antiviruses? The middle guy is a lot louder than you. What? I have, um... Probably Dyrus. I have Windows Defender and Malware, but, it's, but Windows Defender has been, like, actually saving me. I'm actually scared of closing it right now. I feel like it's just going to implode and fucking blue screen my computer again. <laughs> Hang on, everything seems fine. God. We're good to go. We Memory's good? like not going up. Cool. I think we figured it out. Nice. Yeah. Let's right. go, dude. All right. I pray. Anyways. Bless me... RNG. Do you see everything? Yeah, my map tools look completely different now. Hold Cause on. you gotta reset everything. You gotta get all your windows situated and everything again. Okay, I need what the action bar on the bottom right. That that's all I need right now. Go to the top left hand corner, click on window, and then make sure that selected beer beat. And you know, selected window is check marked if it's not Click it. Okay, that that's that's basically it. I'm good, I think. I have so, the selected window on the chat. I think that's all I need. Cool beans. Well, I'm glad we figured that out. I thought my computer was having a fucking well. It's all good, man. <laughs> It's funny because I just did a sponsored thing for <laughs> something like that. I should probably delete the tweet. Jesus. Fuck. Alright. Everyone here? We ready? E. Short for? Hey. Oh, Shoreford just said he was going to go leave because he picked the... <laughs> this always happens in D&D &D where there's, like, downtime. Chain and right AFKs. when it's about to end, someone says, oh, I'll be right back. Chain AFKs. Where is the... Where's the arcane constructs? I just moved them off the map. Cleaning oh, the okay. map. They're, they're still there. I just moved them off okay. the map. Okay. All right. Good to go? Well, thank you guys for waiting. No problem, man. All right, so let's pick right back up where we left off. All right, the arcane constructs have just been defeated. They lie beneath you, broken, shattered. Their arcane energy billowing out as their lights dim. I what, killed them, smile. What do you do next? Well, since I'm in a land of mystery, I want to see what's in here. They did not bleed. Oh, I assure you, friend, they bled the weird magics that were within them. As you approach the door, you open it. Inside, you can see a bedroom. Dust 
covers the floor, and a thin layer as well upon the windows. This place has not been occupied in some time. Investigation. As you investigate the area, you can see that the embroidery of the cloth of the bed appears to indicate that of the ancient elven lineages. Specifically, the style is old. Far older than, well, anyone here. Do I notice, can I check the drawers and the footbed? As you check the foot, foot lockers chest. and the drawers and the vanity, as you search the room entirely, you see that the drawers are empty, excuse me, empty, and that there doesn't seem to be anything of interest. I leave. You have anything else you just want to do, Orc? Yes, I I believe I have been asked of your names as late as it seemed. Well, I am DeVale. Kuno. Aaron. <laughs> I am Brotar. You half orc, half human. I am repeating it again for more information. It's the same information, bro. Bro. Knowledge is power, my friend. I'm curious. Your jaw. Your jaw seems powerful like mine, but artificial. Can you tell me what 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 caused such a uh, such a condition? Bro, we're breaking and entering. Yes, you're right. We must go. We must go with haste. We must go silently. You ever do a B and E before? You do a lot of brash things for wanting to acquire knowledge. I will uh, slowly. Am I able to open this door? Where are you? Oh, there. Yes. Oh, yeah. All right, I will slowly open it and peer in sneakily. As you open this door, you can see a, well, a strange hallway filled with plants that seem to be, well, healthy and real and a little overgrown. You can see that there is a central stairwell that leads further up the tower. All right, I, I, I dash in sneakily and I carefully peer up each uh each, like stand around the corners peering up the stairs before i proceed farther the and stairs it, seem clear all right and I'm, I'm gonna i'll rush back down i'll open this door say we may proceed upward unless you wish to continue to survey the lower floor let me check something real quick understood i will watch for enemies I'm going to go in this room. Veil, as you enter this room, you can see a makeshift bar and mess hall. Dust covers this place as well. However, there is something that stands out. On the central table, there is a very elegant looking bottle of what you assume to be elvish wine. Its labeling is, well, it's enchanting. It's covered in gold and sparkles in the light in the window. I'm going to yoink it. All right, you yoink it. Uh, can I do any checks on it? Maybe a history check? Sure. You can make me a history check followed by a... Let's just start with a history check. You, this is indeed elven wine. You recognize the labeling. And as you read it with rune, uh, eyes of the rune keeper, you notice there is a couple of things. Specifically, it is from a vineyard that you've never heard of, something called Viatali. And as you look even closer, you can see that it says Bondus wine. Do I know what Bondus wine is? You have no idea. Well, I'll put it in my bag. And then go with the others. Okay. 
you all right there, Aaron? Oh. No. <laughs> all right. Does the party ascend? Yes. Ascend. Remain behind me. I shall scout ahead. You come to the next floor of the tower. There is still yet further that you can go. On the stairs, that is. You see a set of large doors in front of you and other smaller doors throughout. I'm gonna I'm gonna peek through this door. Yes, As you open the door carefully and peek within, you can see what appears to be a common room with an ethereal fire in its hearth. This is a ghost brothel. I'm gonna go inside, do an investigation check. As you investigate this area, you uncover something quite strange. Within one of the couches, there is an envelope, ancient and tainted with time. I'm going to sit on this chair, and then I'm going to open the envelope. Uh, you still there, Dyrus? We didn't lose you? Yeah, I... Okay, okay, okay. I was just making sure of something. Making sure he's not dead. Yeah. Now everyone's paranoid of Dyrus dying. Even Dyrus himself is paranoid of him dying. Alright, do you, uh, do anything with the envelope? I said I opened Oh, it. I'm sorry. All right, as you open the envelope, what is inside is not what you would expect. It's not a letter or parchment or anything written, but is instead a strange black powder. Hmm. Would I be able to do any checks on it? An Arcana check will reveal more. You recognize that the black powder is a flux for smithing. And even with the naked eye, you can see that it is magically enchanted. Hmm. Aaron. Uh. This powder seems to be magically enchanted. Do you want to see if you can see more about it? <laughs> <laughs> Do you? Did you just snort it? Yes. Wait, did you snort all of it? Okay. Not all of it. Make me a constitution save. Just some of it. What the f <laughs> All right. You begin to hack and cough and wheeze as your insides are torn up by you snorting magical flux. <laughs> Nothing good that... comes of it. <laughs> Does does this level of uh, involvement, you know, give me an uh, advantage on an Arcana check now? No. No, it does not. <laughs> I will not be too rash, but why are you just snorting the powder? So that's that's not a custom in these lands. I I don't understand why you did that. <sighs> I've never seen anyone do that to a substance they've never encountered. It's a wall. But it's alright. That's, That's a sofa. Really, sometimes sometimes you just need to to get in there and really feel around. Well, did you understand anything more about it or Of course. I just right. What did you tell? The words don't exist. They okay. can't explain it. It's powder. There are no words, Aaron. It's complicated if beyond it had, words. If it had words, words, I of could knowledge, read it. No one in the world knows these words. What does your stomach say about those words, then? It hurts. So, your stomach is telling you you're not supposed to do that. Don't That's know. not weird words. That's basic biology. I agree. I'm gonna lay down. 
Can I can I do any other checks to see what the magicalness in it is? Unfortunately not. Although you do notice that two of your party members are currently relaxing. Mm. <laughs> One of them is asleep. Well. With that, I'm going <laughs> to go explore some more of the place. Would you like to take Actually, a short rest? <laughs> no, I, I don't need to take a short rest. <laughs> What's this? That's a dresser. A, wa a wardrobe, excuse the dresser? me. Do you open it? Yes. As you look inside, you can see a set of stately robes. I'll, I'll grab some of the robes and <laughs> place it over Aaron. <laughs> oh, now he has a blanket. Oh, that. that is very thoughtful of you for the weird squid. You fool, I have resistance to cold. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Kuno carefully investigates this, this strange fire. As you investigate the fire, roll me an arcana check. The fire is obviously magical, and it also is a constant effect. A fire... That never stops burning, that never ceases providing heat and light. Although the fire does not burn. Hmm. Mere trickery. Uh, is there anything significant about the the horns and and weapons strewn about? Are they merely decorative? They're decorative, yeah. Okay. Hmm. This room seems to hold no further clues. That I could see. We must press forward. Well, if they're gonna not check the rooms and take a short rest, I'll just pretend I go through each room. Okay. Well, pretend or actually go through. Well, I mean, like, actually go through each room. Uh, okay, okay. Alright, so you not... search. So, as you, the two of you search the other rooms, uh, you see that they are just simple quarters meant to house minions, perhaps? Uh, servants? Uh, students? Whatever this tower's purpose was. Nothing of interest, though. Nothing of interest. All right, oh. I'm gonna go and tap my bow on Rotar's chin, metal thing. Oh, are you ready to go yet? Oh yes, just a short detour. Let us go. Okay, so you get you do give them a short rest. Yeah, if if it was enough time, will we check? It takes all the an rooms? hour. But yeah, it would have so. taken you some time, so... Rotar, that means you can spend up to 7 d12 worth of healing for your short rest. Oh. It's best to spend it one at a time, so a d12, now add your con of 4. So that's 10, so heal 10. So just do d12 plus 4, and then you have 7 of those. Yep. Well, d12 plus 4. That's 8. Also, when Aaron finally awakes, Kuno's face is like an inch away from Aaron. The whole time? Okay, just so just as your eyes open, you can feel his breath just blowing on your face. Well, we'll heal 16 <clears throat> first, Iris, and then you can heal your uh, 5. It's weird, but it doesn't bother me. <laughs> just get up. You're almost there. One more should do it. The decent roll. Boom! 12. In fact, I would like to smell Aaron. Roll a smell what check. Would that be investigation. I want to see if I smell anything weird about him. That's but... perception, I'd say. Okay, because we're both of the sea, so I figure I might be able to discern something strange about him. Oh my god! With a twenty, mm -hmm. you know that Aaron has never used shampoo. <laughs> well, would you need to use shampoo for tentacles? Uh, with a no. fucking natural 20, you inhale Aaron. <laughs> I, I don't know what to tell you. He smells like... like fish. <laughs> mm, just a fish. All right, let us... let us push forward. Stay behind me. Oh, I did not mean to move you. I'm sorry, sir. All right, we must push forward. All right. As the party gather to ascend further. Ascend! And I'll go the slowest. All 
All right. You ascend further, and more doors appear. This has become frustrating. Why? We're learning many things about a place we've never been before. We've seen a weird fire and and Aaron snorting magic powder. I don't know what we're learning. Well, you can't control what an individual does, but magic is all through these lands, which shouldn't be too surprising. What? Have you still not recovered from snorting this stuff? All right. Have you been here before? Do you open this no. door? No, Aaron. Again, I, we have. I will carefully open it and peek through. As you open it carefully and peek through, you can see what appears to be a throne room. You can also see that there are tables and chairs for other smaller councils and a central map table with all sorts of accoutrements specifically for navigation and planning. I'm going to read the map. I'm going to reactivate my true sight my true sight cuz we took a nap. Mm -hmm. I will kind of duck behind the table. <laughs> Peer around. We must always be ready for an ambush. That's a wall. That's a wall. Oh. Right Dude, it's go through that door. I know it's hard That's to see. Jeez, okay. Yeah. I'll help him find the door. I'll look at the table. All right, hold on. People are splitting up. Let me let me handle developers. All right, Vale. As you approach the table, you can see that the maps seem to be within this this area of Majital, the nearby region. You can see that there are strange marks throughout the dunes, dunes that you don't recognize because, well, they're not dunes. This is a map of when Majital was not a desert. You think that this map is of high value to the scholars and archaeologists. Retrieving it would be of great import to them. I take the map. What's the map's name? Uh, this is a Gar uh, Gordon's... Hold on. Oh, here we go. Map of Outposts. Map of Outposts. Yep. And that okay. is a bonus objective that you have just recovered. Well done. Mm -hmm. boop, 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 boop. You're level 9 now. Hell fucking yeah. Let's go, brother. Cake on clap. All right. Do the two of you enter this room? Yes. Yeah. Hand in hand. As you enter this room, this is what you see. This is an alchemical laboratory, complete with all sorts of arcane paraphernalia, supplies, ingredients, and tools. Your true sight reveals something hidden, Aaron. For unbeknownst yes. to the naked eye, do you see this? Yes. To normal sight, this appears to just be a bowl, but to your sight, you can see that there are a pair of eyes roiling and twisting around inside of it. I want to investigate the roiling eyes. Make an arcana check. Not that one. Get it. That's the one. That's Unfortunately, not the one. you are unable to identify what the eyes actually are, but thankfully there appears to be some instructions written here. <laughs> wow, so helpful. Brotar, as you look around the room, you basically see what you see on the map. And if you want to go up and explore something, just go up to him and let me know. All what right. What do the instructions say? Aaron, it seems that the instructions are referring to see here the indoctrination of the arcane eye the spell stitching of the arcane eye and finally the revelations of the arcane eye instructions for each of these three uh so do i read them separately or you choose which one you would like to read first what was the second one okay let me go through it again 
Just the second one. Let's see, I lost my place there. Indoctrination, revelations, something else. The indoctrination of the arcane eye, the revelation of the arcane eye, and the spell stitching of the arcane eye. I want to read about revelations. All right. As you read through the revelation of the arcane eye, this is what you're able to find out. The revelation of the arcane eye reveals to you a series of strange anecdotes from the elven empire. Specifically, there are three things of note. The war of the bane of man. The stance of the lord of flowing water. And then finally, the prophecy of the heretic. Am I like a... <laughs> Is this again choose one to yeah. read? Yeah. Uh, the stance of the Lord of Flowing Water. As you read through the stance of the Lord of Flowing Water, with your true sight active, you can see that there are runes hidden amongst the lettering. They are glyphs and can be activated with touch. I'm gonna touch them. As you place your fingers upon the <laughs> strange glyphs, and impress them. The parchment dissipates, and the eyes become real to the touch. They begin to royal once more, and there left behind is a chalice made of silver and inlaid with opal. Uh... You know Invest what a chalice is, right? Yeah, I know, but I'm saying, like, is it, is it magical? Can I investigate further? Yeah. Uh, the chalice is not magical, although you sense that it is great importance. And specifically, while investigating it, you notice that at the bottom of the chalice, where the cup would once stand, there is not a stand, a smooth stand, that is, but rather what appears to be some sort of strange... Uh, how, how would I How would I even... De how would I even describe this? Um... See, there's not enough words. No, no, no. What, what word did I use? Well, I guess abnormality is fine, but uh, essentially, it appears to be a key of some kind. The arcane key, perhaps, they were talking about, or? You know, it doesn't look like the keystone. This could be. This could be for something else. Okay, I'll hold on to that. Uh, this is called the Lord's Chalice. Rotar, as you approach that table, you can see that it is covered in arcane writings. Specifically, this table seems to be leaning towards the study of astrology and the mapping of the Great Astral Sea. It is covered in a manner of spheres, potions, and also a strange dais, which atop that dais, there is a panorama of strange spheres which you sense are of a celestial nature. Would you celestial. like to investigate? Yeah. Um, hold on. I rolled a three. For 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 what? Inve investigation. Oh, 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 investigation. Okay. Yeah, because you asked me, so no, I, 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 need I, I meant, would you like to look at it and not the? If you want to use, it, that's fine. All right. So you wish to investigate? That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. That's fine. Oh, okay. All right. As you as you study the strange spheres, you begin to notice that they are in some sort of pattern, and specifically the panorama, as the spheres rotate around, are also in a pattern. In fact, it almost seems like the panorama is not complete yet. Would you like to attempt to complete it? Yes. All right. Make me an arcana check to see if you complete it correctly. <laughs> oh, my. That's not good. All right, as you place the spheres onto the panorama carefully with your big, meaty orc hands, 
the panorama begins to spin as the last sphere is placed. The magic within it beginning to just contort itself, rotate itself, vibrations in the very air. You can feel them pressing themselves against you. The entirety of your armor begins to shake. And then the panorama explodes. But it doesn't explode onto you or even into the room. But rather, it explodes as if in another realm. Bro, I think you just killed a race of fairies. That's, that's genocide, bro. That's all Apparently that happens. Blue screened. Wait, he, just, <laughs> did he blue screen? God! That's, a, that's a funny blue timing. Blue roll of death. Blue roll of death. Oh my god. He destroyed his own dimension. He destroyed himself. Hmm. I I don't know what the problem is. It can't be map tools, right? Because he's been here the, like we've been playing for like 30 more minutes. I don't think it is. I I killed I killed Dyrus. God damn it. Man. This is a good session too, man. Fuck. What do we do now? I guess we wait to see if he comes back. But at this point, we're coming up on end time anyway. Feels bad. It does. Well, I, I can investigate something uh, if you want to do that in the interim. Well, uh, yeah, that's that's fine. I should move on. All right, go ahead. Where are you, Kuzo? Uh, Kuno. Excuse I'm a... Me. Still in that living area, but I was investigating the throne area. All right, as you investigate the throne, give me an investigation check. Okay, and um, I have proficiency with carpentry, so I wanted to give the wood a good look. Oh, in that case, roll me uh, your carpentry. Okay, um, what would that be? <laughs> oh, just basically make a roll with... Uh... This would probably be wisdom based, I'd say. So D20 plus wisdom plus proficiency. Alright. Alright, you notice this wood is obviously, uh, well, you think it's imported. Uh, something that you notice about the throne that it is a lot younger than the rest of the wood in this place. By enough that you've noticed that the decay of the grain is completely different. So this was a recent addition. Now you don't know how early or late recent really means, but it was definitely added far after the construction of this tower, meaning that perhaps it was repurposed. As you investigate more into the throne, you notice that it is inlaid with gold. But the gold is actually not melted down, reshaped, goldsmithed gold, but rather it is as if someone just hammered in gold coins in a haphazard fashion of the throne. Hmm. I'm, I'm going to attempt something weird. Um, I believe my carpentry tools kit includes a hammer. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to take a gold coin and attempt to hammer one in myself. Okay. As you hammer the gold coin within, the throne begins to light with arcane power. And upon the seat of the throne, a key appears. 
made of brass. Ooh. I will abscond with said key. Hmm. Interesting. You back, Dyrus? Yeah. I am trying some stuff. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and do yours, Devel. All right. This particular table is filled with all sorts of monstrous lore, specifically about the different enemies that one could face. It is written in an elven lilt and an ancient elven, which you can easily read due to your warlock ability. Easy clap. As you study the secrets on the pages, you realize that, strangely enough, there is one particular being or enemy type that is described. A watcher. What is this watcher? As you open up a portrait describing it, you can see that a watcher appears to be an aberration, which is a central fleshy sphere covered in tentacles ending in eyes with a massive eye in the center with a great maw beneath. <clears throat> it's a beholder. <laughs> Redacted. Copyrighted. Trademarked. There's a <clears throat> something I <clears throat> kind of know, but <clears throat> can't say its name. It's a watcher is what they're called. Yeah. Do I do I learn anything about it or just its appearance? You do. You learn that the Watcher, uh, well, a couple things about it. It has eye rays. Um, you know that it floats and that its great eye negates magic wherever it looks. But more importantly, it seems that this information is classified and around it, it says, be not tempted to study the secrets and the weaknesses of Gordon. Hmm. So maybe Gordon is a watcher. Hmm. I will take it with me for future references. Alrighty. And then I'll look here. Unless you want to continue on with Aaron. All right, Aaron. I, I, I would read everything that I'm you trying, said. I'm trying to read it. Uh, you them. can't. I can't? No, because it dissipated. Oh, yeah, so what do I have left? Just the chalice. That's There's why it, that's why it dis that's why it depended on what order you read them in. Okay. Uh, is the bowl still there? Yes. Uh, then I'm going to take that bowl. And... I don't know, look around. <laughs> what did, uh, what did Brotar just destroy? It's not really clear. I'll pat him on the uh, back he, as if he did he a good job. He screened again. Jesus Christ. And yeah. All right, let's let's finish up the rest of this room with you guys looking around. Okay. And... What's on this table? All right, as you go and move to that table, you can see that this table is dedicated to necromancy. Blood, <laughs> sinew, skin, and all sorts of strange aberrations can be seen strewn about this table. It seems specifically that there is one. I guess I should say study of necromancy that is being uh, pursued on this table, and that is the study of enervation. Bring me over there. The power of the Shadowfell and the loss of life energy. There is a large black crystal upon the table. I'm all about which, necromancy. In which many of the notes seem to be about. Can I study the notes to see what it is? Indeed you can. Do you speak Elven? Brother, what does it say? Are you beckoning me over? <laughs> I can't speak Elven. I mean, I can go over there if you want. 
What are we looking at? I'll I'll bring it over to him. Because I don't know that you're into necromancy. All right. You bring the notes over to Mm -hmm. DeVille as he is currently looking at a transmutation table. Right. What kind of notes are these, Aaron? I don't know. There's elven. It's probably about songs and sex positions. Do you read them? Yeah, I read them. Uh, they are reference to enervation, which is a study of necromancy. Hmm. This interests me greatly. This is about necromancy, which I am very fond of. What is it? Again? Enervation. And what is innervation? Enervation is the use of, rather, the, the loss of life in exchange for the energies of death. It's basically life stealing, is what it is. Mm-hmm. So, can I learn anything specific from it, or is it just. Well, like... you know that this study is about. Uh, it, it refers to some crystal. This study here relies on a crystal. Wasn't there anything else on that table? There it's would... like a crystal. Blood and bones. Alright, you're useless. I'm just gonna what, go. What does it say about crystals? Oh. <laughs> Friend. <laughs> I want to tell him about my great find. Who? My friends, I I wanted to show you. I I found a key. I I saw some sort of some strange arcane puzzle, and I've got this brass key. Hold on to it. We may need it later. Yes, yes, of course. I got this chalice. And what can you stick your stick your key in the chalice and turn it? (laughs) I'll hold it up for him. Well, I I trust you to to believe that this may do something, and I I'll, I'll, I'll do, you guys do what that I can away from me. <laughs> well, I try and learn this. Can can you guys scoot down? Shoo shoo! I Fine. back in my hand. <laughs> oh, all right, all right, all right. Unlock, unlock my challenge. <laughs> I, I don't know if this is supposed to be weird, but you're making this weird. I'll put the ball, the the bowl here. that I picked up on my head as well as I'm, a hat. I'm just gonna hand him the key. Here, here, you do what with what you want with it. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron will be in the corner, kneeling down, closely staring into the chalice while he turns the key within it. Coro, we have to make everything work in reverse. Kuno. Yes, Kuro. Mm. I'm gonna All right, at so you look at the table. you look at the innovation crystal, ignoring whatever the hell's going on over there. Yep. And it seems that specifically it is referencing that this crystal is a substance that steals the life force of those that touches it. Hmm. <laughs> Am I able to like pick it up with something? Like, does it only have to like be directly touched by like the skin Direct, or uh, the skin contact? All right, so I'm gonna pick it up with like the drape of my cloth and then put it in my bag. And what's the crystal called again? An innervation crystal. Can you type that in the Discord? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dyrus will be able to come back. He said he's going to install it on his laptop. Cool. Nice. Everyone's patiently waiting to hear what happens when the chalice gets unlocked, but... It's... it's... there's nothing to unlock. (laughs) I said the chalice was a key. I know, Arcadum. Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh, you're just being crazy. Oh. And, uh, what was the... the parchment I read for the... That involved the innervation crystal. It is it, that was just what instructed you that it was a a crystal that would steal the life force of those that touches it. Oh, okay. But um, do I see anything on here that would inform why they need that crystal, or nope. do they just have it? It's just research. Hmm. I'm gonna go back to that other table then. This table denotes transmutation, and specifically. It seems that once again, 
an individual is trying to uh, solve one of alchemy's greatest mysteries, and that is the mystery of the Philosopher's Stone. <clears throat> Specifically... Where's the... Edwin? Oh, I knew it was going to happen. <laughs> Specifically, the transference of one material into gold. Is there anything uh, of use, or is it just general research? It is general research, although there is something very promising. There is a single vial of liquid that is of a, that is of, of a golden color and shines with the light of magic. And there is, specifically in one of the instructions that refers to, although they were unable to find the process that would cause uh, the transference of lead into gold or any of the other types of material, they were, however able to create a golden sort of concentrated power that has pure fortune within it. Hmm. Am I able to do a check to know what happens if I drink it or if I like, This is a vial of luck. And roll Ooh. me an arcana check. Snort it. I don't think you snort liquid. Arcana. And not with that attitude, you don't. <laughs> well, you are unable to identify what it would what it would do, but the research indicates that it would only have a positive effect. All right, I'm gonna grab the vial and carry it in my hands, and go to Aaron and say, "Hey, Aaron, drink this." Why? It's good for you. It will help you understand the languages you see. I drink it. I... <sighs> okay. If you're thirsty, this, I have a jug that can make beer. We, we don't need to just drink and snort everything. I, I, here's it's the, okay. Here's Kuno. the problem. All right, this is what it does, okay? Okay. It grants the uh, user, it grants the imbiber extraordinary, extraordinary luck, which means that they have advantage on every roll that they make for a session. Yeah. Unfortunately... We are at the end of the session. <laughs> hey, that's not my fault. <laughs> I didn't know what it was. Here's what and you e do. And even if we end the session right now, we'd come back and be in this exact moment. It only lasts a session of play. That's the duration. Okay, then. Tell you what I'm going to do. Tell you what I'm going to do. Uh, instead, of, instead of that, I'm going to give you... Three inspiration. Does inspiration ever go away? No. no. You keep it and you can use it whenever you want. So there you go. You have three inspiration instead. Okay. Do you feel better now? That's thing. Hey, we can hear you, Darius. Nice. Okay. I didn't like it. Well. It was lemon flavored well it's not always about the taste my friend what is a lemon so you guys hear me fine yeah yep we can hear you okay um i think i need to be recentered. okay i'm gonna peek into this room kuno thinking he's separating from devil to to uh what is the word and you go different places, spreading Split. out. Splitting up? Yeah. And he carefully looks through this door. And I carefully look at it. Okay. As you approach the doors, and I, I assume that you open them, yeah? 
Yeah, well, we're carefully looking yeah. through them to mm. see that no one's As there. you open them slowly, you see a library. Ooh. A just vast the requiem of knowledge. I want to be. Oh, I must tell Devael there is a man in here that looks just like him. That's because it's me. Oh. Oh, look, this table is definitely made of wood. I know that because I'm a carpenter. I'm going to do an investigation check and see if there's any type of books that, look, you know, grasp my attention very well. Okay. As you enter the Requiem of Knowledge, first of all, you see that many of these tomes and scrolls are written in all, in all sorts of different languages. Uh, they are written in human and elven and dwarven and, or not human, but common, and they are all over the place. Uh, the different subjects that can be found here range from carpentry to hunting, hunting down demons. Anything that you want can be found within this library. So what that means is, is that you at any point can come back here and use this library as research for the specific topic in mind. What that means is, is that up to three times you can research any topic of your choice, in which I will give you as much in information about it as possible. Please keep in mind that the more specific you are, the better the information is. I want to, is there anything that pertains to or Dawn. Well, this is something you should decide as a party because it's a party oh. resource, and it's okay. and it's a oh. precious one, so you shouldn't. Wait, it has it. limited uses. Three times. Three. Total forever. D yes. Okay. Well, we'll get back to this room another time then. You want to check the last room with me? Oh, Kuno. absolutely. And I'm gonna Power and numbers. All right. As you investigate this area, you can see that this is another laboratory, but this one is focused completely on potions. Uh, specifically, you find there are six potions that have been completed in this area. There are three Cure Wounds potions, or excuse me, not Cure Wounds, but uh, three Supreme Healing potions, one Whoa. potion of Flight, one potion of Haste, and one potion of heroism. Of heroism. Yep. All right, me and Kuna will just pick those up and then go to the party and tell them about the bookstore. <laughs> hey, Aaron. Huh? In the library. We are able to, well, I'm able to read anything that we would like to know. And we can know anything about it. Three of each. I have some questions. And what are the questions? I can't tell you the questions because you can't know. Well, you can't read it without my help, so. But are you going to read it if I tell you the question? If the party agrees upon it. Well, that's... Those are bad odds. I mean, you are could we... whisper it into my ear. I thought we were friends. Well, that's why I'm saying you could whisper it into my ear if you want. Okay, but... Don't tell anyone. I am a man of secrets. I will stand back. I will not invade your privacy. Are, uh, are you good. connected, Darius? Okay, you're good. All right. I'll just say that. Okay. I'm gonna PM you. All right. It looks like Rotar is leaning in. You just hear that big metallic breath on your neck. And I don't explain, and then I go back to trying to unlock the chalice with a key. Hmm. Well, you didn't give me an explanation on why. I will It'll not... be worth it. I will not ask what he said, but do you think that we should ask it? Hmm. I will not say what he wants to know. Of course. This seems to be... It is a specific thing, but I do not know if it'll help us. Everything that is, that was, it wasn't enough. 
It's reinvented. Everything that was was an excuse for the birds. Here, Aaron, will you calm down if we learn the subject? Do you just want to know more about birds? We could yes, look up but if you bird. read about it, you can't tell those guys. So if I read about it, I can't tell anyone else. Will you tell me? Well, maybe and I'll then be I'll more... decide if we can tell everyone else. Well, maybe I'll be inclined to read it if you tell me more about why you want to learn about it. Will you uh... come with me? Okay. You you gotta stay here because you're not you don't know the words. I know several words, like horse, plank, planks, plural. All right. Stand. Likes birds. You uh, yes. you like you like knowledge and, and 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 knowing everything, right? Well, the main purpose of knowledge is power, and that's. And do you want to give that power to other people you don't trust? No, I wouldn't want other people to have it. So what I'm gonna tell you is power, and you can't tell anybody. It'll just be between us, and the more people you tell, the more chances the world explodes. But do I get to share in this power? Well, yes, because you're going to be the one reading the made-up words. Okay. There's probably not even a book in there for it anyway. There but probably there is, is. There is a vast amount of... Well, this place is old. Very yes. old, maybe. But, okay. No one knows this, but above all else, above every god that you know of, there's another god, one true god, who created everything, he did everything, he's all-powerful, he knows everything. So maybe these people have a book on him, that's who I told you. That is the one true god? But no one knows about him. I don't know if he doesn't want people to know, but I know. Well... I do not follow any god or deity. So. It's more important it than this frivolous worship of, oh, the god of elves. He used to be immortal. The seven were mortals. This is different. This is very different. And is this who you follow? Of course. I will use... I will read about this then. But we should have to find something else that the party also wants to learn about. All right, I'm back. Do what you must, but don't tell anyone yet. All right. Let's go back then. Boat. Boat is another word that I know. You want to learn about boats? No, I already know about boats. They come boats in many are... sizes. Is there anything you... We have found a vast library. Is there anything you would want to know? Any? Mostly, it has to be specific. Brotard does not care. All right, that settles that. Is there anything you want to learn about Kudo? Kuno. I mean, yes. Uh, it's a it's a selfish wish. I'm not sure it would benefit the party, but I certainly have desire for more more knowledge. That is why I'm on my quest. Mm. So you want knowledge on why you're on your quest? Oh no, I know why I'm on my quest. I wish to live forever. So you want knowledge on how to live forever? Correct. Hmm. I would like more knowledge on the mastery of necromancy. So we have three things and one person that doesn't care about things. We have three things we learn, and I think I will go learn that for us. Thank you. So. All right, so the party intends to use the library. Yep. Yeah. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, I, I'll DM you the thing that... Okay, well, we need, to, we need to kind of go out of character for a moment so I can explain how this works. Yeah. So, uh, in order to keep the library freeform and to keep it useful, I made it to where you can only study three things. And the reason that that's a game mechanic is it represents that just so happened to be, through serendipity, what the library actually had on hand. You guys get why that's a mechanic and how that yeah. works? Yeah. Okay. So there's that. I mean, I assume there's probably like a bunch of not useful stuff in there. Yeah, like, like the three big things. Yeah, exactly. And now the next thing is, is that 
remember the more specific you are about something the better and the intention this is not like a genie's wish it isn't like you ask me something and go ha ha i'm not trying to get you so mm -hmm. we can go back and forth on what it is you're actually looking for before i give you a true answer all so. right we can start with stir thing but he does he wants to make sure no one else in the party knows all right send it to me yep uh, that's who he wants to learn about. <laughs> I'll be right back. You ask for a friend and the genie gives you stir. I know, right? I'm kind of writing mine out exactly how I want it worded. And then you just you tell, yeah. Man, that's a lot to fucking type. <laughs> well, only means they're gonna know about it. I might have to answer that one outside of stream. That's fine. And then Kuno wanted to learn about how to. Oh, well, I guess he can just say. The specific method in which the mortal a mortal turtle may live for an exceptionally long time, if not forever. Something that he can reasonably attain within a decade. Okay, so that's easy breezy. Uh, as it just so happens, there is a place in which you can go to learn about all of the... Or, excuse me, that you can actually pull this off. And that it was rumored that the Lord of Flowing Water possessed the ability to grant the long, the long life of elves to others. Perhaps that would be the best way... The, or, excuse me, the best place to start. True immortality cool. must be a, a specifically based in a magical field of some kind. A wizards and druids can attain it, for example. But for someone who is not studied in the magical arts, um, the best place to go would be a place that's nearby. So seek you, the Lord of Flowing Water, and his tomb city. That is where you will find what you seek. Awesome. Then... What did I want to learn about? How to... The best way to master necromancy. The most powerful sorts of necromancy. Hold on, give me a moment. Go around asking people if they got any spells. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yes. The Fernando route. He was a new wizard. He was only, like, level 3, man. Can you say it again? The best way to attain the mastery and the most powerful necromancy and necrotic spells. Okay, let's... Let's let's make that a little cleaner. You wish, yeah. you wish to find a greater mastery of necromancy. Yeah. Okay. If you wish to find a... If you wish to find a greater path of necromancy, then... The, let's see... That's not very specific. Let's make that more specific. Uh, do you have a time frame, a specific type of necromancy, one specifically for warlocks? Mm. I assume that you want something that you can actually use. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's cut that down. Like maybe a lost spell of necromancy. I know what to do. I know what to do. All right. There is one being that studied necromancy to a deep deep understanding and seeking out their knowledge would be a way to mastery of necromancy you must seek thee the man <clears throat> the elf that hated humanity the greatest opponent of the lesser races and one of the last true vigils of the elven empire you must seek the bane of man the bane of man that's his name that's his title do I know his name, or is that just the title? You don't know his name. Just his All right. But I'm a man. I don't mean he'll hate me. All right. Well, I think we're about ready to head on up. This has been an enlightening floor. Mm-hmm. A nice wooden floor. <laughs> this, this floor has been enlightening. Right. Oh, ship. Ship is a big boat. <laughs> yeah. ship, 
ship is a big boat. Yes. I'm sorry. I, I, I this guy, this weird squid, has got me thinking about words. I think it's best if you don't listen to Aaron too closely. All right. Mm. What? <laughs> All right. And as you, uh, did you want to do anything, Brotar? Or are you just waiting for them? I thought. I think Brotar, Brotar, just Brotar wishes for his enemies to bleed. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. You stand before the stairwell that leads you higher into the Tower of Gordon. What dangers will await you above, I wonder? Unfortunately, we will have to find out next time on the Old Thrones. Ree! Ree! Yeah. Let's Unfortunately, go our... Path. Our... Well, I have stuff coming up after this. Let's just go beyond the limits. Let's go even further beyond. Plus Ultra. Yeah. Plus, yeah, plus Ultra. Ultra. This blue screen stuff has really fucked me this entire time. Yeah, man, it's it's fine. Yeah, like it's, it's We had a really good start, and then that happened. and Because I intended for this to go all the way through our time. Like, we should have reached it, but we had a bunch of problems. But it's okay. I'm not worried yeah. about it. I'm I'm just going to use the laptop for when we do D&D, &D because for some reason my computer just does not like there's just something going on with it that i can't figure out it's all good man i i think uh i want to say i think you did a great job role playing dyrus leaps and bounds of improvement over the last character thanks you're welcome man it's well deserved i like everyone's characters by the way it's just that dyrus showed huge improvement i'm very very much excited for it um mm -hmm. All right, well, we'll have to stop it here this time. Uh, once again, I want to thank the boys for returning. Uh, Stir, Shorefor, Ronnie, and Dyrus. Thank you so much for showing up and playing with me again. And I want to say thanks to everybody for showing up and watching. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Start shutting it down. Shut, right. it, ah. shut it down. Whoops. See, see you all next week. Peace out. Oh, real quick before we go. Uh, next week we will be able to play. Um, but after that, Stir is moving. And I think we're going to be out of commission for at least two weeks. Aw. It's going to be longer because I have um, other stuff. Like Aww. Hong Kong stuff. Oh, that's right. And it's going to be... Yeah, I'm going to be in Japan for two weeks too. Just bring your laptop. Then we can play. Smile. Oh wait, yeah, me, hmm, that's gonna be weird, but I'll I'll try and figure something out. Yeah, even when I'm moving, I think I could probably bring a laptop and they need to yeah. port they need to port map tool to switch. I think that's what we need. There you go. See, they just bring laptops and we can still play. Easy clap. All right. Well. Yeah, I have everything on my laptop that I need. Oh, hey, there you go. If we can do that, that's awesome. I'm just saying. uh that is coming up, so there is a potential for the next couple of weeks that we might not be able to play. It's going to be kind of up in the air, but uh, we will definitely play next week. Yeah? Yeah. Yep, yeah. yep the 11th. All right, cool. All right, chat. See you later. Goodbye. Bye. AC 130 inbound. You want me to get my mic real quick? No, no, no. It's okay. Oh, God. Door. Door.